It's football time in the bluegrass. My name is Coleman Scott. I'm joined by Brad Hari tonight for a special edition of Talking Kentucky, where we're going to talk a lot of college football tonight because it's just around the corner. In fact, it's already started with week zero, but uh, you know yeah. the real the real season starts now because it's week one. <laughs> uh, right. And uh, Brad, I, I haven't seen you since we kicked Louisville's ass in the Governor's Cup. I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's that good is, to be that is true. Today. It's been a long yeah. time since I've been on and haven't really seen you around. I mean, on shows and stuff. Um, so it has been a while. Like, yeah, and when, it was fun kicking Wolves ass. At least that was fun. Oh, it's always fun. You know, that happens on a regular <laughs> basis. So it's not, it's getting less fun because, you know, I mean, it's just they're, they're a defenseless punching bag now. So, you know, you can't really, you know, you can't really Brom, enjoy it. Brom's much. doing a little better with them, but we still pulled out the win on the road. So, you know, that was fun. Hey, yeah, and we're gonna do it again this year, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, Brad, um, how you doing? It's 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 good to see you. Um, and uh, it's, it's college football's here. It was a long summer. I feel like it was. I it, it seems like it felt like a long summer to me as well. I mean, super excited. It's actually there's games going on right now. I've got a TV on going right over here. I've got the Western Carolina NC State game going right now. Um, and kinda, yeah. Yeah. And kind of and kind of watching it a little bit. So if you see me turn my head, that's what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> but I need uh, to, yeah, I need to get a little setup going here. I need to get some split screen going so I can yeah, watch. Yeah, me games. too, man. I, I I need to get some split screen stuff going too. But it's good to be with you, Coleman. Um, I always enjoy doing this football shows with you. Um, and maybe we can do a few more uh, different things this year or whatever. We are on College Sportscast tonight. This is the first time we are kind of doing this uh, together, both of us. So if you are on College Sportscast, you'll notice in the comments over there, it says College Sportscast. You can uh, send stars and help support us. That is from College Sportscast. That's from my account. Um, and that is the reason why that is showing up. You don't normally see that here at Talk in Kentucky, but since I am broadcasting this on College Sportscast, we are on Facebook and YouTube College Sportscast tonight as well. So uh, just wanted to throw that up there for you since it's. I thought maybe your guest would be like, oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. We're, so we're doing the dual stream. We got that going on, and this would be as good a time as ever. Uh, to plug our post game shows, Brad. So this year, just like yep. last year, we're going to do uh, post game shows for every single Kentucky football uh, game. So it's going to be the Talking Kentucky College Sportscast post game show. So you can expect that for every single game. Might not be always right after the game, uh, but yeah, you know, sometimes we sometimes we're an hour or two after the game, just trying to get everything set and everything ready, um, and everybody together. And that kind of stuff as well, because um, uh, but we will be doing. They're fun to do, especially after wins. Occasionally, they're a little challenging when you get your butt beat. But yeah, I think you'll. Yeah. I, I think you'll agree with that, right, Coleman? <laughs> oh, I'll definitely agree with that. Yeah, we had a couple yeah. tough ones last year. You know, after Tennessee, Missouri, the Georgia, Georgia. The Georgia game. It, it was <laughs> like it's like, what do you talk about? I mean, we just got our. Like I'm talking demolished. Yeah. Know. What was right. it like 61 to something? <laughs> I don't know. 13 yeah. or something right. like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't we'll, know. Something like that. Hopefully that won't happen again this year. You know, hopefully we'll have some more joyful post-game shows. So uh so we'll <laughs> yeah. see. But but hey, if you don't know, um, of course, you know, we're talking Kentucky. Um, and uh my usual co-host. Uh, has been he's taken the Matt Jones vacation days lately. It seems like so. Caden Holmes, uh, my co-host, is in Hawaii right now. He'll be back on the show next week, uh, I think. We'll have to tell everybody, you know, kind of reintroduce him and tell everybody who he is because people may have forgotten he's been gone so long. But uh, <laughs> you know, but Brad here uh, has his own show, uh, College Sports Cast. So um, you know, if if you uh, if you haven't followed them, go go check them out. Go follow them, and if you're watching a college sportscast, you never heard of Talking Kentucky. Go, go follow, follow Talking Talk Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 
we yeah. we are we are really good friends and we help support each other. Uh, we've been doing this basically from the beginning. We both are in our, I guess you're going to say this is the start of our third year uh, yeah. for both of us. Um, Coleman started talking Kentucky two right after we lost to St. Peter's. So two, yeah. <laughs> two or three months right. before I started college sports cast. Um, yep. Yeah. You know, somewhere around there, but uh, yeah. So we're excited to be able to do this together this year, fully together. We did do these shows last year, the post games that he was talking about football. Uh, but this time they're going to be on both college sports cast and talking Kentucky and we are kind of up in our game just a little bit. Use our <laughs> technological advancement there. Yeah. So that's going right. to be uh, that's going to be great. Yeah. Well, let's say hi to some of our viewers down here in the in the comments. We've got as always Clyde Hare. Uh, what's up, Clyde? In the comments saying yeah. what's good. So we got Clyde. Clyde down was there. the first one. He was yo at the beginning. Yeah, he, he was. He's he's usually the first one. Um, yeah. We got Madeline down in the comments saying it helps vent after those uh, blowouts yeah. to Georgia and things. It like does that. to the fans. I will agree that it's it's good to vent, get on and vent. But when you're doing the hosting and the show, sometimes you're like, uh, "What are we?" Like, yeah. You know, when you get drilled like that, you're just like, uh, I'm, "I'm not sure exactly what we need to say, no, what we need I, to talk about." <laughs> I absolutely agree, but you know it. Like it or not, those are probably our most watched shows. Like when we get the breaks absolutely beat off of us, you know, people want to talk about it. People want to vent and yeah. complain. So actually, like we have a lot of people on when that happens. So um, that's uh, that's for sure. Josh Hart says, what's up, guys? Go Big Blue. What's up, Josh? Is jo what's Brad, up, do Josh? You know, do you know if Josh is still out on the on the road or is he uh, has he made it yeah, back? Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah, his, his job is out on the road. So. Yeah. He uh he is out on the road, gosh, I'm gonna say 90% of the time throughout the year. I mean, he's only home a couple of weeks in summer, a yeah. couple of weeks at Christmas, and a week here and there. So he's out on the road a lot. Yeah, no, he did. I can't is. keep up with it, actually. I like, can't, he was in I Arizona. Can't he was in Arizona a few weeks ago, but he he's not there yeah. anymore. He's somewhere else. Yeah, he's like I'm in Pennsylvania, I'm in Arizona. Yeah, you know. he's, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure where he is. So yeah. yeah, no, no, no telling. But hopefully he comes back in the bluegrass state soon so he can watch the cats um and everything. But uh well, you know, Brad, let's go ahead and kick it off here. And and guys, if we hope you like college football because that's what we're gonna be talking a lot about tonight, is a lot of college football. So if you're a college football nerd, um, uh, this show is for you. So uh Josh, by the way, says he's in Pennsylvania and he's headed to West Virginia tomorrow. So there, uh, there he is. So Clyde says hello, Josh. Just, just I'm just gonna throw that out there. Yeah, Clyde says <laughs> Clyde says hello, Josh. Yes. Hope you're doing good. Is what he um, said actually. And uh, uh, and then Josh says uh, to Michigan in about a week. So he's um, yeah, so, Pennsylvania, yeah. West Virginia, and then Michigan. Yeah. So that's why um, I said his job is out on the road. So yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's a yeah. lot, but uh, well, you know, it, it was quite a way to kick off the college football season last week with the Ireland game. I can't remember who it was last year. It's like Northwestern and like somebody. I think last year, Brad. I can't. I can just like some kind of irrelevant <laughs> team. I can't remember who was Gosh. over there last year. Would, it was definitely Northwestern. It was. And, it was Northwestern, and but I will say this. Oh, it was Notre Dame. It was Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Oh, how do it you was, forget them? Was, yeah, in Ireland. It was, yeah. It, it was either last year or the year before they were in Ireland. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. It might have been two years ago Notre Dame was there. I think um, it was because I think last year was the first year that they did that Ireland thing, which seems so random, like to have a college football game. It's in, actually, it's actually a really fun game in Ireland. Like they fill that stadium. It holds about 50,000, and the stadium is – aerodynamic and new and like it's really a cool stadium um and they fill the street and do college game day there it's it's a pretty cool event actually now if you're a team and you got to fly to dublin ireland and then come back and play football the next week um like georgia tech's yeah. doing you know what i mean like it's you know it's 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 a tough 
tough deal. Well, that's, really. And that's the excuse that Florida State fans use after yeah. losing. They're like, well, try to try to fly to Ireland and then try to throw a football. It's like, well, I guess yeah. Georgia, Georgia Tech. Well, I mean, Georgia, yeah. Georgia, yeah. Georgia Tech must have swam. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they swam over there. Yeah, that's that's yeah. right. Uh, which right. is arguably more exhausting. Yeah. Um, we we got uh, somebody you know well in the comments here, John Hammond, saying, OMG, who is that ugly guy on the uh, screen? Uh, so I don't know if he's talking up, about man. you or me. But yeah. uh, John will probably be on say John is, if you don't know, Brad's co-host on, uh, on College, on Sports college Sportscast. So. Yeah, he'll be on um, our some of our post game shows with us, uh, if not all of them. So you know, it'll be good to to have him on for sure. Um, yeah, he's so, a he, he's he's pretty good with the football knowledge as well. John is so, um, yeah, he's going to join us as well. But let's keep talking about this um, that this Florida State Georgia Tech game. I think everybody and their mother had uh, money on Florida State, but uh, Georgia Tech goes in, beats them on a last second field goal. I mean, what a way to kick off the college! It was a season. great game. First of all, I mean, it was back and forth. It was close at halftime. It was close the entire second half. If you love football, to have that as the first game to come mm-hmm. back to, like. Florida State kicked a 59-yarder at halftime. I know, right? Do you, and, you guys – like, if you were watching, yeah. it, they kicked the 59-yarder at halftime to go yep. – I think they took the lead at halftime with that field goal, I believe. And then Georgia, Georgia Tech kicks a 47-yarder or 44-yarder or whatever it was um, to win the game at the end. So the game was fantastic. You couldn't have asked absolutely for a better Mad- game to kick absolutely, it off. Absolutely, Madeline. We cover all college sports. We do a little bit more towards um, uh, SEC, and then I do some covering of um, some Kentucky media coverage now as well. I am covering Kentucky volleyball and Kentucky women's basketball as That's media. Great. So and, and so, Madeline, for our uh, listeners, uh, podcast listeners, Madeline's asking, does College Sportscast cover basketball too? Yes, they do. They co- they cover just about everything. I mean, is there anything you don't cover? No, we Brad? cover we cover we cover baseball. We do. I have a guy that is a big John Roberts is his name, and he helps me cover the college baseball season as well. We go from now from August all the way till June, um, and we cover um, football basketball and baseball we do some women's basketball as well like i said and i am now picked up women's volleyball kentucky women's volleyball um as media so i'm doing a little writing and covering that as well they had a big game on tuesday night in louisville now you you remember uh when i was on your show the first time i think john roberts was on with us he's an auburn guy is that right he he is and he and he covers Auburn baseball. He's credentialed for Auburn baseball. Oh, okay. John Robert. I didn't realize that. Well, yeah. So I was I was on I was on that show with you. I think you were asking me about the Auburn and LSU game, um, yeah. which I proceeded to try to have an analysis of. I have a confession, Brad. I don't think I ever told you. I didn't watch a snap of that game. <laughs> I totally just winged it on that. I mean, I okay. was looking at the I was looking at the box score in front of me. And I was like, uh, you know, you look at this game, it's all in the numbers, right? It's just, <laughs> it's all the numbers. So right, um, yeah. you know, I, didn't, I didn't know anything about the, but you don't have to know anything about to talk about Auburn football. You know, you just, you can just <laughs> swing it and talk about it. Well, but, he's uh, a, he's an Auburn graduate as well. So he's a big Auburn fan, huge. Okay. Um, and he covers Auburn baseball for us as well. So as media, so we're getting into the media world. It's slow. I enjoy covering the women's game. Um, I actually am an ex AAU coach for the girls um, in middle school ball and done a lot of stuff with that. My sisters played. So I enjoy the women's game and the women's game. Basketball is getting a lot of hype now, you know, as well. So, and Hey guys, I just, you don't, I just saw you... the, uh, the questions over here. So I wanted to make sure I threw that in there. Oh yeah, no, I, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Hey guys, if you don't mind, go ahead and help us out by sharing this video and, uh, do do the whole thing of liking and, and subscribing and commenting and all the, all those things on our, uh, on our stuff that really helps us out, helps us get in the algorithms, you know, as they, as the kids say these days. So it, yeah, helps, it helps us yeah. get, get into those things, you know, like it or not, What's up, Cody? figure that out. So, 
Um, yeah, we got Cody uh, Peebler down here in the comments. We got, got everybody in here now. So, um, But Clyde says he's so happy that Florida State lost. Yeah, I mean, after all the complaining about them not getting into the college football playoff, then they proceed. I to- still <laughs> am going to say to you, Coleman, an <laughs> undefeated Power 4 team should have been in the playoff. I you, feel so you're bad. of the belief that they should have been. You think they should have been in the playoff last year. An undefeated power four, power five last year team yep. should have been in the playoff. Yes. I I just – now, who do you throw out and, and all this other stuff? And that's yep. hard to answer, too. There was only four spots. I get it. But if I am Florida State or a Florida State fan – I'm pissed off, just to be honest. Yeah. Think about it. Think about if you were a Kentucky fan and your team went undefeated. Now, it wouldn't happen in the SEC. I get that. But if Kentucky played in another conference and went undefeated and then got snubbed, we would do the same be, thing. We'd all be yeah. pretty pissed. Yeah, we we would we would be pretty pissed. That's that's for sure. Yep. But I mean, to be fair, that's not going to be a problem anymore because we got the twelve team no, playoff, which is so. great. And I I'm so yep. loving where the college football game is on that front. Now, there's some things with these West Coast teams and the ACC, and there's some things going on that I, I think is a little nonsense. But you know, but as far as the twelve team playoff, I'm so excited for it. I can't yeah, wait. I, Matter of fact, I mean, even a team like Kentucky has a chance have, now could have yeah. a shot. I Even mean, this year shot. with the schedule that we had, you, you know, you look at a team like Missouri, you know, they really have a chance because they have an easy, you know, road to the, the to the playoff. They have an they, easy they schedule do, this year. They do have a much easier schedule than we do. So, and they went 11 and two last year. I mean, they would have made it last year. If there was a Easily. 12 team playoff, they would have made the 12 team field last year. Missouri. Well, you know, you look at the two years that we've gone and won the Citrus Bowl, right? You look at when we played Iowa with the Will Levis year, and you look in uh, 2021. Yep. And then especially in 2018 when we beat Penn 18, State. 18, we were close. We wasn't quite in that 12 spot. I want to say we were like 15, We were like 13. I think we were like 13. 15, I mean, 13. we were right on We were the right cusp there. But we would yeah. we would have would not have made it, but we would have been very close to making it that year. Well, you know, and I think yeah, it would have been between us and Penn State. You know, the Citrus Bowl is kind of like that first yeah. bowl outside of the New Year's Six. So it's like it, it would have really been up to the committee um, of who had the better win, you know. And, and the fact that we got beat by a bad Tennessee team that year wouldn't have helped us, I don't think. Right. So Penn yeah. State may have gotten the edge. But, you know, you look at those two te- those two years – we would have been in contention. Um, yeah, I think, and so. even in the twenty-one year, I think we were like eighteen or something like that. Mm-hmm. In the twenty-one year, and and well, I'm not talking about good. in the rank in the polls. I'm talking about in the college football playoff rankings, which is what yeah. matters. That right, and the yeah. you know the thing that's that's kind of weird about that, Brad, is the seeds aren't necessarily going to line up with the rankings. No, they're not. No, and so that's, the top that's four really teams, weird. the top four teams are going to be conference winners, power conference winners. Mm-hmm. So if Utah wins the Big 12 and they're ranked 12th, they're going to get a th- one, two, three, or four, four. seed. They won't get they won't get the one, but I mean a three or four, probably. Um seed. If so, and also the fifth conference comes from the group of five and the highest ranked team is going to get a not the fifth spot but the 12th spot they're guaranteed a spot but what that means is 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 that the highest ranked team is 25th in the country and it's like memphis or boise state and they're not in the power conference and they win their conference then they're going to get in the college football playoff so it could be the 20th team or the 25th team. So it's not going to be necessarily the top 12 teams in the rankings in that order. And, you know, how awesome are those home 
first round games man, to the beat. I, I mean, that's I be can't awesome. wait. You have no idea, man. It's going to be that atmosphere. Um, it, it's going to be just so rich with pageantry and traditions and it's going to be a blast. I cannot wait for those four first round college football playoff games. It's going to be awesome. The, and the and teams 5 through 8 get home games. That's what I'm talking about. So if you are in 5 through 8, you get a home game in the college football playoff with all the tradition and all the pageantry and you get to go and you get to tailgate at a you know at a playoff game and that atmosphere it's going to be insane now i uh, call me crazy but i i might honestly rather have that than be one of the top 4 seeds i mean i know you have to play one less game but yeah. i mean i i'm just i'm just would be jealous of those teams if i was in the top 4 right like i would want that experience of like yeah, playing at man, home it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be really really fun those that opening round I think I'm going to enjoy it just as much as, you know, the championship game, really. It's going to be awesome. You think we're going to have, like, bracket competitions, like bracket challenges for the college football playoffs? I actually think yeah. we will, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll 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 start having uh, college football playoff madness or whatever you want to call it, you know, the, yeah. uh, you know, the bracket stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we will. Now, I mean, it – it won't come out until the teams are locked in, of course. But, yeah, I think we will. Madeline is asking, where were we when we had Will Levis? Yeah, that, the year we went to the Citrus Bowl, played Iowa. That's that's the year I was talking about in 21. I think we were about 18th in the college football playoff rankings that year. We were a little bit behind where we were in 18. I think we were about 18th, Madeline, if I remember right. Now, I'm a little older. My memory's not quite as good as it used to be. But it's in that ballpark. So we got a lot of stuff that, that we could get to tonight. So we, you know, we we've got Kentucky. Uh, we, you know, obviously want to break them down. We could talk about who we think some conference champions are gonna be. Um, we gotta talk about week one predictions. Uh, yep. Brad, where do you want to start? I'll I'll leave it up to you. You're you're the guest here. I mean. I'm anxious to talk a little bit of Kentucky football with you. Uh, so let's start there, I let's, guess, you know, let's do it. Um, yeah. You know, the season, I'm going to be honest with everybody. I think this Kentucky team has more talent than even some of those teams that we have been talking about in 18 and 21. I think across the board, I mean, if you look at just the defensive side of the ball on this team, they're claiming that we returned 10 starters. Now, they filled in a spot or two where we had some injuries, and that's how it became 10 uh, because we did lose a couple on that side of the ball, Trevin Wallace and Andrew Phillips. Um, but they are claiming that we returned 10 starters, okay? Then they have added – Pop Johnson, Dumas Johnson from the former All-American, college football 2022 All-American from Georgia, a national champion, by the way, two-time national champion. Then we've added D.J. Waller, a cornerback from Michigan last year who was a national champion. And then we've added Christian Story, who is a four-year player for Nick Saban in Alabama and won a national championship in 2020. Do so, you think it's possible that this is Stoops' most talented roster? I do. That's what I'm saying. So just on the defensive side of the ball, Coleman, I feel like there is a possibility that we could have three or four All-Americans on the defensive side of the ball. You take Which Deion is, I mean, Walker, you take Deion Walker, you take Maxwell Harrison, you take Pop Johnson. Jamin Dumas Johnson is his name. Pop is his nickname. Um, you know, you take had some, those. We had some good Jamins on the defense over the years. Jamin Davis. You take you take <laughs> yeah. JJ Weaver, 
You take, yeah, I forget I mean, he's still on the team. J.J. Weaver has been on the team for like 20 years, but that's his, okay with me. Sixth year. It's his yeah. sixth year, to be honest. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, he redshirted one of those, so he's playing five, I think. Right. But, yeah. But still, yeah. But he's been there in six years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, there are plenty others. Derek Jackson, uh, the other linebacker, is is going to be there, you know, possibly that could, that could be. And I'm not saying he's going to be first team, but he could certainly be second or third team. And I'm not saying that these are all first team. I'm saying down the line, these could be all Americans, either first, second, or third team. That's so, how good the defense is. So, so do you think? I mean, obviously, this is going to be the most talented roster, right? But we we've seen that the talent doesn't always translate to success on the field. I mean, look at Florida. It State. doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> right? I, actually, so. in twenty twenty two, I thought we had when Will Levis and Chris Rodriguez and all them come back. In 2022, I thought we had quite a bit of talent on that team, and I thought we were going to be better than we were. Of course, Levis got hurt, missed a game or two, uh, played two or three games hurt, um, and it made a difference in that season. So health is going to – it's definitely – I mean, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. Health is definitely going to be an issue if, you know, if we start getting some um, – Injuries and that kind of stuff. So, all right, Mike, I knew yeah, somebody Mike, was. I knew Mike somebody was going to bring up the offensive line. All well, right? and and just to, to interject here, that's my biggest concern, Brad. So this is something I wanted to pick your brain about because uh, I feel like the, the past few years, it's like if we just had an O line, you know, we could win nine, ten it, games. It has so. been. I, I did not like the offensive line coach. I actually said last year that they should have fired him. Um, yeah. I'm very glad that he brought back Eric Wolford this year. I don't think well, Stu's you know, done it right. I think he really should have handled that better. But I'm definitely glad um, that the offensive line coach was let go and that Wolford is brought back now. But, you know, but Wolf Wolford, though, like, didn't he kind of leave on a sour note? You know, wasn't he, he recruiting for Alabama? He he, like, yeah. He, no, he was supposed to be recruiting on a recruiting trip for Kentucky. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, but then went and recruited for Alabama and never come back to Kentucky and went to Alabama. Um, and he was recruiting a guy who actually transferred on the team and is an offensive lineman this year that went to Florida and not to Alabama. Mm -hmm. Jordan Farmer is his name. And he's a, he is listed as a starter on the offensive line. See, I'm Florida. glad you know this stuff. See, I don't know all these intricacies, but like our so offensive that's line. that's the, the guy that Florida. he actually was on a trip to to recruit that he wound up recruiting, trying to get to Alabama, eventually went to Florida. He went on to Alabama, and now Jordan Farmer has transferred to Kentucky, and Wolford was brought back in. So now they're both here at Kentucky. But you think you think he's a good coach though. Like you think I he do. gets it he gets it done. Okay. I do. He's yeah. the last coach where we had a really good line. He he was the coach here on that 21 team that had a really good line. Now, other gonna, than Schlarman, yeah. Yes. Other than John That's, Schlarman, yeah, of course. This yeah. was he was the coach after Schlarman. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I'm going to give you a stat here. Okay. And I knew somebody was going to bring up the offensive line and Listen, I'm a fan too, and I totally get why there would be some apprehension here about the offensive line because the last couple of years, two years ago was awful. Last year was a little better, not a lot, a little. Um, experience. Kentucky has their five starters that they have named. We got Gerald Mincy transferred from Tennessee, Jordan Farmer transferred from Florida, and then we got the three guys back that's from Kentucky. You got Mark Marcus Cox, Eli Cox, and Jagger Burton. That's the starting five, okay? Yep. The starting five has 143 starts of experience. It's a lot of starts. On the offensive line. Yeah. It's the it's the second most 
in the SEC. Okay. It, it, next and, it's to, the, and it's the ninth most in all of college football. Well, who, who's the who's the first in the SEC? Is it like Bama or something? I'm not sure. And I Actually, it's probably, was gonna... it's probably not Bama, honestly, with all the transfers they had when Saban yeah, left. I, yeah, I doubt it's Bama. Georgia's got a very good offensive it line. Could, it could might be Georgia. Be Georgia. Yeah. It, uh -huh. it might be Georgia because their offensive line is really good. Now, so what you're saying is the experience is going to translate into a good O-line. The experience is there, and and we're not talking about Mincy was at Tennessee, Farmer was at Florida. We're talking about SEC experience here. Like these aren't chum guys that are you know from rinky dink whatever coming in in the transfer portal. I mean these are these are experienced SEC guys with 143 starts across the five guys at the offensive line in their careers. Um, like I said, it's second most in the SEC, and I, I I saw these stats from a Kentucky thing, and it didn't it didn't list. I didn't see the whole list of who had the most. Um, but I wanted to bring them here because I knew I was doing this show tonight, and I knew somebody would bring up the offensive line. So right. So I wanted your, to throw it. Calm out. your worries. So Brad is saying, calm your worries about the O line. I think that the offensive line with Wolford back. I think and the and the experience that we have now, I think you're going to see a, a very good offensive line. Can we take two injuries and be good? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, the, the depth, it, you know, is a uh, is kind of a concern there. We that, have we have some young guys in behind them that are red shirt freshmen and stuff like that. And I'm gonna be honest with you, on the depth chart, if we have to you know, go down. Dylan Ray, who was a starter last year, filled in um, when Kenneth Horsey went down on the offensive line, is one of them. He's a good one that would mm -hmm. be a backup. But you look at the other backups and you got some redshirt freshmen and some sophomores that really hadn't played much. Um, so it's a little thin behind those five. I will say that. Let's go ahead and get to another Mike question here. He's, he's bringing all the good questions tonight. Is this year's offense coordinator going to be as good as Cohen? Uh, you know, Brad, he's, he's unproven, uh, I think, but a lot of people from Boise State were, like, really sad to lose That's him. That's because so, he know. done a very, very good job at Boise State. Um, yeah. He had one of the top running backs in the country uh, last year that is coming back. I, I'm really surprised that he left that team, to be honest with you. Um, now I'm going to give you guys another stat here talking about, um, Bush. So Bush Hamden here at Boise state last year, this is how not only he, it was balanced. His offense was this balanced, but this is a high number as well. He had his offense at Boise state last year had 3000 and 98 yards of passing offense for the season and 3,008 yards rushing on the ground. That's how balanced they were. And that's what we need as <laughs> Kentucky football. We need but it's three. Balance. That's over 6,000. That's over 6,100 yards of offense. I'm going to tell you guys, well, offense, Kentucky, yeah. Kentucky didn't get close to that last year. No, no, definitely. And, you know, and you, you talk about the tempo too, right? So what do you think we're going to see with the, the pace of play? We were the slowest team in the country, oh. maybe next to Iowa last year, but th this is kind of a no huddle operation. It looks like he's going to run. Here and I, I, I'm hearing that he is going to actually, uh, when we open Southern Miss, that he's going to script the first 15 plays and a lot of them is going to be no huddle. That's what I'm hearing. So I'm hoping works, to see yeah. that. I'm hoping to see that early on um, in Southern Miss game here. Um, but, you know, the offense, you ask about Cohen. Cohen in 2021 with Will Levis um, and Chris Rodriguez was good, and Wandell Robinson was, was good. The offense was good. Last year, I'm going to be honest with you, he stunk. Yep. I, I agree. Yep. 
agree. And, and so, you know, and he's kind of just does one year everywhere, it feels like. And when you don't yeah. have time to develop that consistency, I mean, that, he, that might be part of it. The yeah. offense was slow as snails, molasses running out of a jar. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just – it was terrible. He stunk last year. Bush has to be better than that, surely. Mike's saying, who's our starting running back to start the season with Chip out already? Yeah, you know, you already got the Ohio State guy with the, with the broken hand. I, I'm going to try to say this right, Brad. Is it Dime Sumo Dime. Carnbe? <laughs> Is yeah. that it? Dime, Dime, Dime Sumo Carnbe. DSK. A, DSK is what a lot of the people call him. Yeah. Um, he, he was an NC State transfer last year. He played with us last year. Had about 20 catches in the receiving game, but didn't do a whole lot in the running game. They didn't use him in the running game a whole lot last year. Uh, but he is going to be the starter against Southern Miss. Uh, but I do believe we're going to see a fresh, a, a actual freshman and a redshirt freshman both against Southern Miss. James Patterson and Jamari Wilcox. Remember the name Jamari Wilcox. Now they say I've heard a lot of guys talking about Wilcox. Yeah. I'm just telling you guys, remember the name Jamari Wilcox. I'm not saying that he's going to lead the SEC or nothing, but what I am saying is if he gets any space at all, he's gone. He's, 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 he's that fast. He's that fast. Is it, are we talking Barry and Brown fast, Brad? Are we talking? Uh... I'm not sure if he could beat Barry and Brown in a race. <laughs> I'm not real sure about that. But from a running back, you know, bigger kid, experience, you know, from what I am hearing, Mark Stoops in a uh, press conference the other day, or it might have been on the radio, said that he was the fastest back that he has had at Kentucky since Boom Williams. Hey, we got Marsha uh, Davis-Wilson in the comments here. Thanks for joining us, Marsha. She says, you're right, he's totally fast. So he's already he's been fast. turning some heads, Brad. And, you know, yep. Kentucky, you know, Kentucky, we've been spoiled with running backs. You know, we've had Benny Snell. We've had yep. Chris Rodriguez. Well, we had Boom before that. We had Boom before that. We've had Ray Davis yeah. last year. So we got all these yeah. NFL backs. Um, yeah. Brad, it's it's not going to be, at least I don't think it's going to be the same kind of power no, I back. I think it's going to be style. running back by committee. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it, it might be, you know, kind of a different scheme. Normally, you know, it, it's like the stoop style of football, right? Like everybody in the stadium knows we're giving the ball to Chris Rodriguez and he's still going to pick up 10 yards because it's going to take the entire Georgia defense yeah. <laughs> to, bring, yeah, him to down. bring him down. Yeah. Um, that's not going to be what it is this year, but I think we're still going to have some balance, Brad, especially what you're talking about with Brad uh, with uh, Bush Hamden, with yeah. the balance he had I mean, at Boise. The balance so. he had at, at Boise State last year is very encouraging, I think. Uh, because you don't want to lose that running game. We're in the SEC. Like it's sometimes you got to have a little smash mouth football. Um, and you got to open some holes and you got to run right through them. I mean, that's the SEC. I'm not saying that, you know, I, I want to drop back and do some RPOs and all that too, and throw some bombs. I want to see that too, but you absolutely have to have that running game and have to have to have that balance. Now, I don't think we're going to see a fourteen hundred dollar or fourteen hundred yard back or nothing this year. I just don't. When Chip comes back, he's only supposed to miss one or two games, um, so he might miss the South Carolina game too. But he'll be back in a week or two, and when he comes back, I think you're going to see possibly all four of these guys get some playing time and and maybe get five to 10 carries a piece in, in some of these games. Well, let's talk about quarterbacks and, and Mike even um, is kind of talking about quarterbacks down here in the, in the comments. Um, yeah. The hype, as soon as he transferred, you know, uh, last summer 
uh, Brock Vandegrift from Georgia. Everybody's like, oh man, it's going to be, he's going to be the guy. He's, he might be, he might be better than Will Levis. You know, who knows? We saw him slinging around uh, against Kentucky, right? When they put him in, in like the third yeah. quarter. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, after know, they we, were up 55 yeah. to three or something. Yeah, right. In the third after, quarter. And, we, yeah. and we did our sad post game show that that's right. But uh, yeah, you know, Bush Hamden's been talking about, he likes Gavin Wimsett. He might be playing two quarterbacks, Brad. I, it would not surprise me if there isn't a package for Gavin Wimsett, um, maybe as the Wildcat quarterback or, or something. It would not surprise me to see him have his own package and, so and, Gav, and Gavin get to play. You think it's going to be like a red zone, like goal line package type thing for him? Or, you know, what kind of – deals you think it, gonna it wouldn't surprise me at all that you know i mean it could just be a change of pace package you know it don't it wouldn't necessarily have to be goal line um but it could be used in the goal line as well i think it's going to be more of a change of pace and i'm not saying he's going to get out there um you know six times a game for two or three plays at a time or nothing but you know a, t- a couple of times in each half to kind of a change of pace and to have a package to bring him in for two to four plays, something like that. Um, it would not surprise me. He has been impressive in fall camp here. And I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we don't see that now, Mike, you asked about the backup and, and, you know, would it be Bo Allen? I don't think it would be Bo Allen. I don't think it would be either. on the depth chart. So, it says or Cutter Bowley. Could yes. be Cutter Bowley. The depth yeah. chart says Gavin Wimsett is second or Cutter Bowley. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't think that they are gonna burn Cutter Bowley's red shirt. I don't see that happening. But mm-hmm. he does get four games to play in. So, and a game like Southern Miss here, I mean, he's probably not gonna play against Texas or Georgia. Unless we're just getting killed, which we might need them. Not, we get a Will Levis South not, Carolina, a Will Levis South Carolina situation. You might need to yeah. put him in. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and and he has four games, but I'm going to say that they are going to in hopes to hold back Cutter Bowley's red shirt. That that would be my guess. I mean, he would get up to four games to play this year. I just don't see them unless. There's injuries and they have to. I mean, that's another case. But if everything goes as planned, I would say the plan is is to redshirt Cutter Bowley. Okay, I'm going to give you an over-under here. Gavin wins it over-under eight snaps in the, in the Southern Miss game. In the Southern Miss game? Yeah. Oh, you're going to do a prop bet on yeah. me right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. This, is, this isn't even DraftKings. I just made it up. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, um, eight snaps, Southern Miss. I'm going to go over. Yeah, I'm Mike's go going over. over too. Yeah. I think I'm going to go too. over. I might too, honestly. You know, especially like, you know, it's the first game. We're trying to get the offense rolling and everything. Well, um, if yeah. we play like we should, I think they will want to get one of the backups a little bit of playing time here, I think. You sure. know, if we're up three scores in the fourth quarter or if we're up four scores in the fourth quarter or whatever, I mean, I think they will want to get the backups, uh, you know, to be honest with you, if we're up like Clyde says here, forty-five to seven, I mean, I think this is a game that we might see Cutter Bowley get a few snaps. Well, and that's that's another uh, you know that's another line that we can talk about, right? So the line last time I checked is set at twenty-eight and a half. That's a lot of points, Brad. It was you think twenty-eight this cut? morning. You said, is it twenty-eight and a half now? Uh, the last time I sh- the last time I it was twenty-three it was and a half, half, like four days ago. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's twenty-eight and a half. Uh, but it just keeps you, going up. You think? Do you, well, do you think they cover that? <sighs> My, Mike Mike says fifty-two I, to seven. <laughs> I see. I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't well, think, tell uh, me, Mike. Tell me, Mike. When has a coach stooped Kentucky team? 
killed somebody and put it down their throat and beat somebody 52 to 7. Hey, with with Bush Hamden, with this all this all these when? yards, six thousand yards when, of where, offense. Where is it? Know? Because I ain't seen it for eleven years. I ain't seen it. Okay, Josh says it's still twenty eight. So not twenty eight and a half. It's still twenty eight. So you know, that's four and touchdowns. I'm gonna tell you guys so. right now. I'm a I'm a diehard. Okay, but let's be honest. Opening games, we sometimes we haven't looked the greatest. Well, you know, matter Brad, of fact. Matter of fact, if you guys want to get real technical here, the last time that we lost an opening game. (laughs) It was Southern Miss. Yep. Uh I was there. I'm just telling you, 2016, it was Stoops. And we had a 35 to 14 lead and never scored another damn point. I was playing trumpet in the band. I was there, Brad. I saw us lose. So, I mean, I'm not overlooking Southern Miss. I hope they aren't either. So, yeah. I hate to bust y'all's bubble, but I swear to y'all, I had to bring it up. Now, uh, Mike says he's got something to prove this year uh, with his best roster. I believe our defense scores a touchdown this week. Um, And, uh, you know, that might absolutely be true. I think we're going to get a lot of – I do think we have something to – to well know, to prove definitely well i think you know the, as far as the defense goes i i i think they are going to take some to the house this year brad you know i think that i think that's going to happen yeah, um i think they will Harrison but did uh, last year twice in the in the in one game the vanderbilt game that was fun that that's right but uh you know I, it seems like stoops has been and really all the coaching staff have been pretty quiet uh Brady, do you think that's a you think that's a good sign for us? I think so. I know that you guys are talking about the score and talking about the defense here. You know what I'm excited to see? And I know this is gonna sound strange, but I, I and I hope he gets one. I cannot wait to see Barry and Brown come out of the end zone on a kickoff. I just can't wait. Oh, it's gonna happen. I Listen. cannot wait. He is so electric, man. I cannot wait to see him catch the ball come out of the end zone on, you know, on a kickoff. I can't wait. I, He's I'm going to say, I'm going to be jumping up. I'm going to be on the floor. I can't wait for it, man. I can't oh, wait. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's definitely going to happen, but, uh, well, Brad, let's, let's get into some, some record predictions. Uh, you know, I, I've given my opinions on this show a lot about that. Um, so I'll, I'll let you go first. I'll let you lead it off. I don't know if you've given one on your show yet, but uh, what do you think the Cats finished this year? Well, we did a, we did a preview show, and I pretty much said what I think they're going to do at the end of the show. So, um, you know, I, I'm in a toss between actually what Clyde just said there, between eight and four, nine and three. Here's my thing. I'm going to say a few things here when it comes to trying to predict predict this record. So there are some hurdles that Stoops has had over the last couple of years. You know, you go through from, from 18 through 21, we were on an upward trend. We had two 10-win seasons, won the Citrus Bowl twice beat some good teams, Penn State, you know what I mean? Like, so uh, we were on an upward trend. If you look at the last two years, we've lost to Vanderbilt at home two years ago. We've lost to Shane Beamer and South Carolina two straight years. Can't happen again. We cannot, cannot, under no circumstance, have that happen. Not only that, If you look at a couple of trends in the last couple of years, we have not been very good at home in the SEC. No, we haven't. And and, and that's surprising. We have not been good at home in the SEC. I'm telling y'all, look it up. I I don't know the exact record, but it's not good. I'm telving you, it's not good. Lost now, to Van, lost to Vandy at home. We lost to Vandy way. at home. Uh, we lost yeah. to South Carolina at home. Um, and then, of course, Georgia beat us two years ago, and Tennessee's beat us, and you know what I mean? So 
we've we've not been good at home. I'm telling you. Now this year, Missouri. SEC, we play, we play South Carolina, Georgia, Auburn, and Vandy. That's our home schedule. I'm going to tell you guys right now, no excuses. This team has to win their home games minus the Georgia game. I'll give you the Georgia game yeah, because mm-hmm. they're the number one team in the country. I'll give you that Georgia game minus that game. And that, that brings in an Auburn team in a second year under freeze that's going to be better. They're going to be a good team. Yeah, you can't overlook not, them. Yeah. It's not mm-hmm. going to be an easy game, guys. That Auburn game is not going to be an easy game. That brings them into play. You absolutely have to win that game. If you do that and you can beat the South Carolinas and the Vandys, because those games are in there, then you got two games out of the first eight. You got a home game against Georgia and an away trip to Ole Miss that are going to be really tough games to win, okay? Now, we've played Ole Miss pretty tight just about every time we've played them in the last three to ten years. We've played – matter of fact, one time we had a uh, missed extra point and lost the game by one. I was also against, in that game. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, against, against uh, Ole Miss. We played them pretty tight. Will Levis went down there and only lost by like four on the road. Um, we've we've played them pretty tight. So can we win that game? Man, I mean, that could change everything. Because here's what I'm saying to you guys record-wise. Eight games in, we will be headed to the Tennessee game. We'll have a we'll have a off week. And then we'll go to the Tennessee, I think, or is it tennis or is the off week? It's after Vandy. Tennessee? It's our our Vandy games coming off our bye week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. So, but we will have four games left. We will be at uh, Tennessee, home against. I forgot Auburn. who. Are. I think it's Auburn. No, the week. The week point. The it's a non-conference game that's not very. Strong. Oh. Murray State. Murray State. Murray State. Yeah. Then, you know, home against Murray State. Then we play Texas on the road and and Louisville at home. So we would have four games left. If this team can be six and two after those eight games, then there is a chance to do something special and knock off, win the two games at home against Murray State and Louisville and knock off one of Tennessee or Texas. If you could do that and be nine and three, there's an outside shot that you could be in the mix of that 12. I'm not saying oh, you're going to uh, make it. 10, 10 to two, two, you're in. 10 to two, you're in. But 10, uh, two, you're in. 10 to two would be, we'd have to win that Ole Miss game on the road or knock off, do the unthinkable <laughs> at yeah. Georgia at home. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, I think nine and three, you're certainly a uh, nine and three SEC team. You, uh, you're certainly in the conversation. You're in the right? mix. Uh-huh. I really yeah. don't feel like we will make it, but I think we'll be in that 15 to 18 range if we're nine and three somewhere, you know. Um, but you never know. I mean, people could knock off in front of you and, you know, you know, so, I mean, you never know. It could happen and you could sneak in in that 11th spot because you don't get in as an at large in the 12th spot. So, so what's your, what's your prediction? We going eight and four, we going nine and three. Eight and four is an absolute must stoops morrow. This talent I'm telling you guys, you think think that's like the floor. We got to be, we got to go eight and four. Eight and four is if you want the fan base to not be on your ass. Eight and four is the floor. Yeah, yeah. I'm just telling you. That means you absolutely have to win. Eight and four is the floor. All right? Now, nine and three, ten and two 
is probably the I think 10 and 2 is probably the ceiling. And that's I mean, we play we play three of the top six ranked preseason teams. Georgia, uh, Texas, and Ole Miss. And two of them's on the road. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you a prediction though. A hot take. I I don't think Ole Miss is gonna be as good as people say they're gonna be. You know, maybe maybe they'll prove me wrong and they will be, but but Brad, I think, I mean, like I was saying it earlier, talent doesn't always translate to a good team. And they loaded up on defense in the transfer portal. I don't think their defense, at least, is going to be as, as good as people think it might be. I think we're going to be able – I think our defense can win us that game. Like, as here's good as this I, defense is going to be, we'll be able to put up enough points to, to win Why? Here's what I'm going to tell you. we Kentucky football has never – been in a position where we could have three to four all Americans on defense and have that stout of a defense. And at the same time, by the way, we have a five-star quarterback guys. Kentucky football has a five star quarterback and he's getting no love and no hype. No love. The uh, Just yesterday, I seen a list of the top 50 quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks. They had Brock Vandergriff, 36th. What? He was a well, five-star quarterback. And I've seen SEC lists, Brad, that have them as 13th or 14th. I mean, right? it's, it's unreal. I don't get it. like I, yeah. He's getting no love whatsoever. I'm going to tell you guys right now. Outside of Tim Couch, when Brock Vandegrift takes his first snap against Southern Miss on Saturday night, I don't know that Kentucky's ever had that kind of talent on the field before. Ever. as With the ball in his hands, I don't know that we've ever – we've had some four-star guys, and we've done pretty well with it. I'm not saying we haven't, and we've had some good quarterbacks. And I'm not saying that Brock Vandergriff is going to get be the top guy. I'm just saying from a talent-wise and grading, grading, out, grading out that talent, we've never had a five-star guy run our team before. And if Brock Vandergriff, Vandergriff can be the guy – that everybody thought he was going to be three years ago coming out of high school. I mean, we're talking about a guy who committed to Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma. The quarterback wizard that's won like what, three, four Heisman trophies with his quarterbacks. We're talking about a guy who then didn't want to go out West and stayed at home because he's actually from the state of Georgia and played for, I don't know, maybe the best quarterback, our best uh, head coach in the football now since Saban's gone, Kirby Smart, and won two national championships. I mean, yeah. Josh yeah. Woodson was a good quarterback. He wasn't a five-star kid coming out of high school, I can tell you that. See, but you don't think it's all hype. You think he he lives up to the talent rating there. I'm just telling you, fans, and I know there's a lot of doubters, but I'm telling you, if he can play up to that hype and he plays like a five-star quarterback, we're talking about five-star quarterbacks are the ones that play at USC and Oklahoma and Alabama and LSU. And, you know, so if, if he can play up to that standard, I'm telling you all right now, with this defense, 10 and 2 is not out absolutely out of the question. It's not now. Hey, bro, Brad's getting us excited over here. Bro. Well, but he, I, I like it. You got to live up to it. I mean, you can be a five star. We've had a few four star kids come in here and we think they're going to be great. I mean, and I mean, what was the guy drew something? That come in after yeah, Drew Barker. Yeah. Barker. 
Barker, mm-hmm. thank you. Drew Barker, that was a four-star guy, um, top two or three hundred kid we thought was going to be fantastic. And I'm not sure. He, he, I think he had two starts, got hurt, could never come back and do anything. Yep. I mean. Mm-hmm. Clyde's in the comments saying Georgia's dynasty is over and everything, <laughs> everything else over here. So, uh, Claude's calling some, some, uh, some hot shots, uh, hot takes tonight for sure. But, uh, well, so Brad, I, I think I officially predicted eight and four, uh, on, on this show. I think I'm going to be honest with you on my show. Possible. I predicted yeah. eight and four. Um, yeah. I, and, and, and my predictions is I'm trying to be as I, a couple of years ago, I was on the hype train. Okay. And I was under the assumption that we were with Levis and Chris Rodriguez and, and all that we had coming back that we were going to just take it to the next level. Well, I'm not doing that this year, but do I think this team has that potential? I actually do. I actually do. I think this team has that potential. And that's why I think that's why I think this year is going to be different. It's because we're all tempering our expectations, including the including the coaching staff. Yeah. You know, is it not necessarily tempering expectations, but they're being quiet. Right. Right. They're 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 not they're not talking a big game or anything. Yeah. They're not trash talking. Remember, even Morrow a couple of years ago kind of was talking in the offseason. Yeah. yeah. You, and and they've been quiet. Yeah. You usually no noise or or no news from the coaches is good news. Um, yeah. In the Stoops era, it it seems right. like so. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I think we're both kind of saying eight and four. Is that, is that what we're saying? But I'm saying eight and four. Fear. Absolute. If this team, I'm gonna tell you right now. If 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 we start out this season and not this Saturday, but next Saturday. We fall to South Carolina. I'm going to make a bold prediction here for you, Clyde. I'm going to make a bold prediction here for you. If we fall to South Carolina, this team is going to go south pretty pretty fast. And I also do not think that the love for Kentucky football will stay – in the stoop stadium, if you get what I'm saying, I think, I think that deep down, I think Stoops wants to coach a team that's going to make a run. I really do. Now, I think, I think he wants to build it and he wants to do it here. But if we can't get there, and this is 12 years in, and we are still losing to stupid people like Shane Shane Beamer and sunglasses. And I'm just going to say it. If we are still losing to people like that, I think he's going to have to take a step back and kind of relook at all this. And it would not surprise me. I'm not saying that, that he's getting fired guys. That's not what I'm saying. He might call it quits because I think it would take a lot. For him to get fired. Oh yeah, no, he's never good. All right, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm just saying, I I think the passion will diminish. Is that South Carolina game the the biggest game of the Stoops era? Possibly, most important game of the Stoops era. Maybe not biggest. But a lot rests on that game because of where it is in the season. It is. I mean, there's no denying it. I mean, I've said a lot here tonight when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, I mean, Josh, I don't think he'll get fired if they go six and six. I don't. I think it would take four and eight just falling off the – I mean, I, I don't think it, it would happen. Now, do I think that he is going to lose a lot of his passion and desire? Do I think that Stoops – really wants to have some and take some teams to the top. I do. I really do. And I think he believes he's bringing in enough talent here and has the coaches in place who
who have been his defensive side has been there for years. The coaches now the offense has changed year after year, and he can't seem to get that. But on the defense, they've been together for years. And you got Brad White returning. I mean, did this trio, you know, you had Vince Marrow, the quartet yeah. of coaches. Yeah. On the offensive yeah. side, you got you got Marrow that's been there the entire time. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, but but you know, Bush Hamden, you know, with the addition of him, and this is kind of an all-star coaching staff that you got. And and you know, is is he now the longest is Stoops the longest tenured coach in the SEC? Now that's he is that he's actually gone? He's actually not only the longest tenured coach in the SEC, guys. Do you know that he is number 19th on the list of the longest tenured SEC coaches ever? Ever. At Kentucky. At Kentucky, too. <laughs> I mean, ever. Let's, let's not forget that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, only time will tell, and it all starts this Saturday. And uh, that that South Carolina game is going to be a good one. And uh, John Hammonds, as he said in in the comments, is is going to be there uh, in attendance yep. for that one. So that's going to be is, um, he is going, and it's a it is going to be a very important game for this year. Before the last two years, we had won like six out of seven or something against South Carolina, but you got to get that monkey off your back. You cannot go three years in a row and lose to this. I mean, South Carolina last year was a five and seven, four and eighteen, and they beat mm -hmm. us. Yeah, come on, now. can't 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 happen. No, for sure. Yeah. Um, Madeline Hodges said, "Are we going to reconvene after the Saturday game?" Yes, and uh, we'll we'll go ahead and do another little plug for our post game show here, Brad. Uh, yeah. Madeline, after every single game, Brad and I are going to do a post game show. So you come, come here after, after every single football game this season. I'll try to have a few stats for yeah. you too. I, I like to have some stats. So yeah. I'll bring some highlights and, you know, between the two of us will be basically yeah. ESPN really. Right. Um, that's, yeah. ba that's basically uh, who we are, but quickly, Brad, let, let's transition. Let's um let's pick some conference winners here. Um, if you got, if you got some uh, SEC, I mean, we going Georgia? <laughs> I, mean, is it, is it, I did. Yes, I, I went yeah. Georgia. I went. I went Georgia and Texas. To be honest with you, I really feel like those are the two uh, talent-wise best teams in the league. Um, I do think that Ole Miss, talent-wise, is very close. Now, the question with Ole Miss is: It can Lane Kiffin figure out both sides of the ball and get it done? He's great right. at offense, but can he figure out both sides of the ball and get it done? If their defense is as good as everybody's saying, it's going to be. I mean, it's very possible, um, yeah. so, but that but that remains to be seen. I'm going Georgia until I mean, Nick Saban had a great quote, which by the way, he's on College Game Day now. I think he's he's great at that. Uh, you he know, is. I think that's uh, I think that that's awesome there. But you know, Nick Saban said, "Until somebody beats Georgia, I'm going to pick them." And 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 I'm, it's really I'm funny. Saban there. It's really funny him saying that, by the way. Yeah, as so, Alabama's coach, yeah. Wait a Who second. Beat Georgia. <laughs> uh, Georgia is 43 and 2 the last 3 years, guys. Do you know who the two losses were to? Alabama and Nick Saban. And so Nick Saban. Him yeah. saying until somebody beats Georgia, he's literally saying I'm the only other damn than, person. Other than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what he's saying. Yeah. Which I think makes it There's that much. There's nobody fun. in the country that can beat these fools. And until somebody can beat them, that's exactly what he's saying. And I think it's – I was laughing. It was it was hilarious that he said that, by the way. That makes it that much more uh, <laughs> awesome there. But uh, Josh Hart says, Coleman has Commonwealth Stadium as his background. Brad has a piano on the couch as his background. That's wild. Yeah, you know, we got a little bit different. You know, Brad's a very a, you know, tasteful guy, you know. Come on in, sit down, have a drink. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So yeah, um, that's right. So uh, let's let's go uh, let's go Big Twelve, Brad. I don't even know who's in the Big Twelve uh, uh, anymore. Um, but well, uh, so, so yeah, in I'll my in my first. preview shows for College Sportscast, I picked Utah to win the Big okay. Twelve. I think the best three teams is Utah, Kansas State, and Oklahoma State. 
I think it's going to come down to those three. Of course, two will play for the uh, championship, of course. But I think that's the three best teams. Um, and I picked Utah to win the Big 12. I'm going to go Kansas State uh, just because I think they got kind of a Missouri schedule, right? They've, they've kind of got that schedule, like easy yeah. road to, to, the, uh, to the title game. And um, I just, I just yeah. love Cam Rising. And he's coming back from injury. And he won two Pac-12s, um, back-to-back Pac-12 titles. He was injured last year. He's coming back. Y'all listen for the song, Bad Moon Rising. I hear. I'm telling you, y'all listen for it. Okay. Bad Moon we'll, Rising. He's coming. We'll 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 listen for it. Uh, yeah. well, let's go to to, to the other big, <laughs> uh, Big Ten. Uh, which you know, Oregon is in the Big Ten now. Apparently, yeah, I, and I, I can't keep up with with all this. But uh, I, I'm going, Brad. I, I'll go first on this one. I'm I'm going Ohio State. Um, just because ev- I don't think Oregon's going to – I mean, everybody's picking Oregon, but I don't want to pick Oregon. I, I don't think they ever win anything, so I'm going to go Ohio State. Oregon is a team that's won a ton of games without winning some big ones, to be yep, honest with that's you. that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I really like what Dan Lanning is doing here at Georgia. I mean, at Georgia. He left Georgia at Oregon. At Oregon, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I really like what Dan Lanning's doing at, at Oregon. Um, he's gathering a lot of talent out there, and uh, I love picking up Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma as they let him you know, go to Oregon out there. I think he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the country. I know that people are saying Carson Beck and people are saying other names out there, but – a name to watch for the Heisman is Dylan Gabriel. He's going to be the Bo Nix replacement at Oregon. And all Bo Nix did was have 4,500 yards of passing last year. Um, it's possible that Oregon could come out of the Big Ten here I think it's going to come down to Oregon or Ohio State in the championship game because they have done away with divisions as well. But, man, when you look at the roster and the talent that Ohio State has, it's hard to pick against them. I'm going to go Ohio State. But I'm telling you all, this Oregon team could win the national title. They could. They could. They won't, but they could. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, a lot of the game day guys are picking Oregon. That's that's for sure. But uh, yeah, yeah. What, gosh, I can, what are, is there still an ACC? Are there teams? <laughs> well, there, who's in the ACC now? I don't even know. Florida State's trying to quit. Clemson's trying to quit. I, it's hard to keep up with. Well, Florida State you got, already quit. Yeah, you got California in there. You've got Stanford in there I, in the ACC. I don't know. It's just it's a weird ass conference right now. If you ask me. Um, I'm going to be honest with you in my preview show. I done my preview show for the ACC probably about three weeks ago. I picked Florida state. So I, I, I will own that. Um, they may still win the conference. I mean, who knows, but they starting out. zero and one, I can tell you that. And that's not just overall that's zero and one in the conference. Um, that was a conference game for them. The Georgia Tech came over there. So um, I'm not big on Clemson, and people are t- are taking Miami. And I will say this. I love their quarterback. Cam Ward was at Washington State. He's, he's passed over 6,600 yards the last two years, 3,000 in each campaign. He had 71 touchdowns and 14 interceptions in the last two years. That's pretty good for a quarterback, guys. Cam Ward is the real deal. Out of all the quarterbacks that transferred outside of Dylan Gabriel that I just talked about, I think Cam Ward could be the best. I could be. I mean, he has the best stats outside of Dylan Gabriel. So Miami could be a player in this, but NC State's playing, and I hadn't looked over there and see what the score is. NC State could be a player here. The ACC's wide F-O, W-F-O. I mean, honestly, 
Louisville could win the darn thing. I mean, I was going to say, is it, is it bad? Could I, could I pick Louisville to win? Is that bad <laughs> on this I mean, show? Can I, can I pick on a Kentucky podcast? Can I pick Louisville to win? I mean, I think they'll win. I think Louisville will win the ACC and then we'll beat them. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I think will happen. But, uh, I like your Miami pick too, though. But I, I might go yeah. Louisville just to be just to be different, you know. Um, I'm not saying I want them to win it. I hope they lose every game, but you know, I, I think they they could. I mean, it's the ACC. You could win the ACC, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I might be able to coach a winner at the ACC. Maybe you might be able to. I don't know about um, playing. We we got we got one more right. We got the the pack. Uh, Pack two? Is, it still, is it the pack? Is it the pack two? Pack ten? Yeah. Pack? What is, is that? There is, is no more, time? really. It's just Oregon is, State and Washington State. So no, so I did them really as independents, actually. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I guess we won't we won't do that then because the pack is the pack is gone. Well, um, it is for now, anyway. So um, now hey, we there got, is one. There is one more team out there that I think is loaded. Okay, and that's exactly why I told you guys that I'm surprised that Bush Hamden left Boise State. There, there's a team that's loaded, and that's Boise State. Um, I really feel like this Boise State team is the favorite to get that college football playoff spot for the Group of Five top ranked conference okay. win. Well, there you go. They got the so, blue field. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I think favorite. Boise State. And I'm I'm actually really surprised that Bush Hamden left that. They have one of the best um Genty, I think is his last name. Ashton Genty, I believe is how you pronounce it. I'm not hundred percent sure, but he had like sixteen hundred yards for Bush Hamden last year. He's probably one of the best running backs in the country. Ollie Gordon in Oklahoma State is another one. Um, you got the Ohio State guy. Um, there's a couple of them, you know. But I'm going to tell you right now, he's one of the best backs in the country. Watch out for Boise State. Now, I will say this. They play a tough schedule. So uh, they start out the season um, second game of the year against Oregon. So we'll find out pretty quick. We have breaking news from John Hammonds. Colorado is losing to North Dakota State. Brad, I was hoping that that, that this would happen. Uh he says NDSU is giving them the business. Um I don't I don't know what the score is. I'm just going off of, of John's uh news there. Uh it looks like it is 20 to 14. Uh we're at the 2 minute warning of the first in, half. In the first half. Yeah, it's the Buffs versus the Bison, Brad. Do you think North Dakota State can pull it out in Boulder? I, I have been saying all um, off season that I think North Dakota State could beat Colorado um, at home in this game. Now, I will say the last few days leading up to this, I kind of been wavering off of that a little bit. Um, I mean, but North Dakota State is a real good team. People don't know them because they're FCS but they're the second ranked team in the FC, FCS and them and South Dakota state are the favorites to win the national championship every in year. the FCS every yeah. year. Just about. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. They've the won, they, yeah. they win, they win national championships all the time, you know, and they are one of the favorites. There's only two teams. That's a real favorite. And they're one of them. I mean, they are a really good team. Nor Claude says it best here. North Dakota State is the Alabama Division II college football. I mean, they're, that's, they're, that's actually they're one true. Of them. Yeah. I mean, Montana, yeah. Montana State, South Dakota State, and, and North Dakota State are probably the four best teams year after year um, in, in Speak, that division. Speaking of Montana State, that was another good game the other day. I watched every snap of that one. Um, we had uh, New Mexico State, and yep. uh, actually, I think it was New Mexico. Uh, not New Mexico State. And yeah, it Montana was. State. It was New Mexico and Montana State. And Montana State beat them. Come back and beat them. Yeah, they didn't. I know they were down seventeen. And to Montana nothing, State is another one. They're they're like they're yeah. they're either ranked third or fourth in the FCS. Yep. And they just came back in the one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So 
Yeah, these teams are these teams are no slouches that are at the top of the FCS. Um, they, they're they're really good, well coached teams. Um, so do do I think I tell I've been telling Coleman's asked me this morning. Josh has asked me this morning. They said the spread was nine and a half, ten and a half. It went up. I think I've been telling them all day long. I think it was too high. If it was me, if I was a betting man, I would have bet North Dakota State, the bison. I think they're the bison, right? They're the bison. Yeah, bison versus the buffaloes. Bison. So, yeah. That's yeah, a, the bison a, versus the buffaloes. That's a, that's that's a pretty that's cool great. game, actually. That, that actually is. It actually that's, is pretty cool. I, yeah. I would have advertised that. That's actually a really cool, like, you know, buffalo and bison going. Like, that's. That's pretty cool, actually. I uh, know. I, I actually I actually like that too. But uh, yeah. Hey, let's do let's do a couple week one predictions um, here, Brad. As we kind of round out, might take a couple calls too before we get out of here. But um, let's go. Uh, first of all, well, I mean, we won't won't do any tonight because they've all started already. But um, let's see. Let's let's start with Clemson and Georgia. Uh, you know, I I don't really think we're gonna have to disagree on this one very much i think we're both gonna probably pick georgia but uh you have any strong feelings about this one brad it's our well, first so ranked the, matchup the, it is and it's I, I think it might even be the first game that starts um on saturday the the clemson and georgia game and yeah. um it's gonna be a a really good you know top matchup i think uh georgia is Favored by 13 and a half in this game, according to Vegas, as of this afternoon. That's what it was. Um, I'm not high on Clemson. I'm just not. Um, Davo's not I taking think, any transfers ever. Yeah. I think they, they're they losing some transfers, but he doesn't take any transfers. What that accumulates to me is – depth wise you are you are losing they still have great guys i'm not saying they don't he he recruits at high levels but depth wise it you take a little hit when you do that and don't fill spots yeah um you know so you do that year after year after year and i think you're seeing why clemson is kind of falling down the ladder a little bit I think this game will be closer than most think because it's the first game of the year and you really don't have any footage to watch of teams and things like that. It's a tough matchup first game of the year. I'm going to go I I'm going to say that the score is 31 to 20 Georgia. Oh, you're going. You're going to score prediction, even so big. So you're going Georgia. Okay, I am thirty-one to twenty, Georgia. Yeah, it, no, it's uh, Georgia is. It, they're a twelve-point favorite on DraftKings. Uh, I'm going to say they cover because because as Caden Holmes says, Georgia is Georgia. That's his famous quote on this show. But uh, so I, I'll 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 agree with you there. Um, Moving on, uh, we've got Penn State versus the Fighting Neil Browns of West Virginia. Uh, that, Penn State's only an eight-point favorite. Brad, do you think uh, you think West Virginia can pull out uh, an upset here, Week One? I would like to see Neil Brown get the best of James Franklin. Just to be honest with you, um, it's like it James is Franklin. it is at West Virginia, so. It will be a you know a tougher game there. West Virginia is no slouch. I think they are going to be in that fourth or fifth range out of the Big Twelve. They are a pretty decent team. They went nine and four last year. Um. So, however, I think I'm going to take Penn State in the eight points in this one. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Penn State too. Um, yeah, I, unfortunately, I'm not the biggest uh, James Franklin fan in the world, no, and I am either. a big Neil, Neil Brown fan. But uh, no, I just I, I, I don't think so. I think Penn State kind of runs away with that one, uh, even though it's at West Virginia. Uh, next one, Brad, and, and this is my this is my lock of the week. 
you know, I'm not, if I do a lock of the week, which I wasn't planning on doing that, but th th this is my lock of the week here. Miami at Florida. Miami is only a two and a half point favorite. I think Florida is going to be terrible this year. I'm hammering Miami in that. Uh, I think they win handily. Uh, I got to give you a hold up sign on that just You're for giving a second. Me a hold up. Okay. Well, the reason why I'm doing it is actually this evening, tonight, I saw a report that their running back that injured his knee at the very first of fall camp has been cleared to play. Montrell Johnson, I think, is his name. Oh. Florida's he Florida's running back he oh, he matter. is clear he is cleared to play and he is one of their better players so I think that's going to be a big deal for them it is at the swamp they're going to need more than a running back and I'm going to tell you man. right now this is a huge game for Florida and Billy Napier Billy Napier it's yeah huge uh -huh. huge mm -hmm. this game is huge you look at their schedule. To be able to win at home in the swamp against Miami in the state, they have a three-game rival down there with Florida State, UCF, and Miami on their schedule this year. To get that win would be absolutely huge for this Florida team. I, I'm telling you, if, if they lose this game, this could be a long season for the Florida Gators. I don't, I don't see how they're going to go 500, Brad. I think they're over under win per, uh, win totals like four and a half. So, and a lot of people take a under. long so. season for the Florida Gators. And unfortunately, here, if I'm going to take Miami and switch up and take Miami, I, I've got to, I, Miami's got to win this game. Um, I, and I think with Cam Ward that they can. I really do. Let's see, a lot of lopsided games here at the beginning of the year. Um, one that might be kind of interesting here, Notre Dame at Texas A&M, uh, the old Duke coach, <laughs> which I can't remember his name, making his debut there. Mike uh, Elko. Mike Elko, that's right. It was almost And to be honest with Kentucky. you, you may, not, you may not know this, but the starting quarterback for Notre Dame, his name is Riley Leonard, and he was the Duke starting quarterback. quarterback. yeah. He was the starting quarterback for Mike Elko at Duke the last two years. I'm going an upset week one. I think uh, I think Mike Elko beats his old quarterback, and um, I think there's something about Kyle Field. I, I don't know. It's like people I'm go going there. Notre Dame. I'm going they, Notre Dame, man. Oh, well, what's the spread? What's the spread? On, what's the spread on this game? It's three, and Texas a and is a favorite, a three point favorite over Notre at Dame home. at home. Yeah. yeah. So um, you're telling I, me I can get Notre Dame and get three points? You're taking Notre Dame. You're taking the luck of the Irish. I think I'm going to take the Irish. Okay. Well, I, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that one. I'll go ahead and take uh, the Aggies there. Uh, we already know that we're going to, you know, Kentucky's going to beat Southern Miss, so we don't need to, you know, discuss that one um, anymore. But uh, let's see. Let's look, look some other. The big one on Sunday which I don't like that they play this game on Sunday, LSU yeah. uh, and USC. Um, Can Brian Kelly finally win an opening game? That's all. That's what I want to know. Well, you know, Nick Saban said and until somebody <laughs> beats Georgia, uh, he's not going to pick them. And until Brian Kelly wins the first game of the season, I'm not going to pick them. So I'm going to USC. I, that's, that's the way yeah. I feel almost. <laughs> yeah. But – USC, they can't. I mean, unless they have changed a lot, they can't play a lick of defense. I mean, I could run around out there and do what they do, and I'm well, 50 years fair, old, close to it. To be fair, LSU couldn't play a lick of defense last year, so I know well, they got the true. new new coordinator team, and everything. This game could be that's, 65 uh, to 64. It could be. It could be like that old Texas A&M LSU game being the 70s. It could be yeah, like a basketball I mean, game. I mean, seriously, good grief. Um, what's the spread? On that one, we got uh, LSU as a four-point favorite. Now, this game is a neutral site game. The over-under on points is 64. 
Well, I tell you for sure, take the over. I'm taking the over on that all day. Yeah. Take the over. That you talk about lock of the week. Right yeah. there's lock of the week right there. These yeah. two defenses, shit. 64 yeah. <laughs> on those offenses. I it should be happen. like it should be like 80, 84. Yeah, no, I I agree with you there. And Boston, uh, I, I want to take I want to take LSU in this game. Okay. Yeah. If everything You're everything in to. me says no. Yeah, I'm going USC. So I guess I'm going USC, which I don't even like that. Yeah, I don't either. But uh, at all, that's, that's what's that's what's going to be. <laughs> Boston College at Florida State. You think the Seminoles bounce back, or uh, you think the dumpster fire commences there in Tallahassee? Let me I used to talk. I, I told you I bring y'all stats. I saw this stat yesterday and it kind of blew my mind. Mike Norvell, the head coach of Florida State, when he had Jordan Travis as the starting quarterback at Florida State, his record was 29 and 9 with Jordan Travis as the starting quarterback. Without Jordan Travis as the quarterback, he is two and nine as the head coach at FSU. Two and nine, guys. Like, that's insane. Um, So you're asking me, do they bounce back? Boston College is not a great team. It's at home. Now, it's like a 16-and-a-half-point spread, I think, something like that. Yep, you nailed it, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So, I still say, give me Florida State. I, they they should win this game by three touchdowns at home. I say, give me Florida State. Our audience is saying uh, Boston College. Clyde says Boston College by 14. Josh Hart says FSU back-to-back -back losses. You know, who knows? So, uh Dude, DJ, you need to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> DJ, I mean, that's easier to say than his actual name. I can't, I, I don't know how else people say that. So. Oh, me. Stop it, Clyde. Yes. Clyde, 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 Clyde's out of control. Stop of it. No, that's, that's all good. But uh, hey, that's your week one predictions here. Um, we been, hey we've been going a long time but you know that's uh that that's what you need to do week one of football you know we're excited Brad to get back into it but you know we will kind of go ahead and round out the show here but don't want to get out of here without taking a couple calls so call us if you so desire 502-234-1504 tell us your score predictions for the Kentucky game uh this weekend Brad and I will give you ours uh before we leave um, and, uh, yeah, just any other college football thoughts, you know, those kind of things. So, uh, give us a shout if you so please. I'm going to leave you. I want to talk to you while I have you on. Oh, you're getting a call already. All right. Let's, let's take this call. Yeah, I know already with the phone lines are hot, uh, during football season, Brad, but, uh, All right. you're on with talking Kentucky. Who's this? Well, it's Clyde. What's up, man. What's you ready up, for Clyde? football? You ready for football, Claude? I've been ready for football. I've been ready. I mean, I, I'm also ready for NFL because of my Bengals. And, but I, I just, I've just been ready for football. You know, even though we had Georgia Tech versus Florida State last week, which was a great game. Like, I mean, Georgia Tech just, you know, don't even, don't let the score dictate of how bad Georgia Tech really out physical Florida State. I mean, they just absolutely out physical them in possibly every single way. And yeah, uh, the Georgia Tech's quarterback, he's actually a really good quarterback. I remember him at Texas A&M, a uh, king, and I think he's way better than Florida State's quarterback. I mean, he's a king, he, yeah, uh, he is. Is he an NFL prospect? Probably not, but honestly, he's not a bad quarterback, and I actually do like him. I I completely agree, man. Uh, yeah, he he, he was kind of biggest problem with Georgia Tech, game. Clyde. 
is their schedule. If you look at their yeah, schedule, I mean, they know, have you, a pretty tough schedule. You know, he did what yeah. he, he did what he needed to do to to you know get them in position to win the game, and I, I honestly thought he did very well. And and uh, I think Georgia Tech might have a decent year. I think they will. I, I mean, they had an all right year last year. I think <clears> it'll be better this year. Honestly, um, that was a huge win for them this past Saturday, and. And you got to give credit to their coaching as well. The way their coach came up with the offense to uh, get them in position for Haynes Key to get him comfortable. And you just got to give him credit, man. You, you really do. Well, man, what's your uh, what's your Cats prediction for this weekend? What's your uh, – you got any final score predictions locked in yet? I, I, I guess I you already know. threw one in the chat, but I don't know if that was your yeah. serious score. My yeah. other, well, my other score prediction would – maybe be like 37 to 10. Okay. But those 45 to 7 or 37 to 10 is probably my two score predictions. I think probably 37 to 10 is more realistic than 45 to 7, but hey, you know what? Anything can happen, but <clears throat> if we give up 20 to Southern Miss, I will raise my eyebrows high and I will have very strong concerns about you know, our defense, especially because there's no way we should give up 20 points to Southern Miss. It just, it should, it, it should not happen. And I hope it doesn't either. Hey, I hope it doesn't either. But, uh, well, hey, hopefully we'll talk to you after a 45 to 7 win um, on uh, yep. on Saturday, Clyde. So hopefully that'll be the case. But uh, thanks for calling in and watching as always, man. We appreciate it. Yep. I'm going out to Shamrock. So I'll probably get home. That's probably the time that you all probably will start what time do you guys plan on starting do you know yet well hopefully before midnight uh so no, 30 minutes you know, after, yeah, yeah 30 maybe about, minutes after maybe about 30 minutes after the game yeah okay so let's see so the game will end at what time 10 45 probably so yeah 10 45 11 something okay. like that so yeah okay so around 11 20 i guess yeah, probably, probably so. Okay. Probably around that. That's that's okay, our goal sounds, anyway. Okay, that sounds good. I'll see you all then. Hey, we'll talk to you then. Hopefully, cats win. Uh, we got bigger <laughs> problems if we don't. But uh, thanks for calling in, Claude. Absolutely, go cats. Go cats. I like that 30, 37 to ten prediction. You know, that's uh, that's probably yeah. pretty pretty realistic. You know, I could I could see that though. Um, Jonathan Johnson, I gotta I gotta say something. Is Colorado rated? <laughs> <laughs> and they're still overrated, even though they're not rated. Yeah. I, I mean, we're getting another, I just wonder. You get another call here. I think this is Josh Hart. Uh, you're on with Talking Kentucky. Use this. Hey, this is Josh. What's up, guys? What's up, Josh? Haven't talked to you in a minute. How's it going, dude? What's up? It's doing going well, man. It's going well. Uh, uh, I guess uh, somebody said something about Colorado. They didn't beat. Colorado's getting beat. Yeah, the bites and beat the buffs. So 20 to 17 at that time. Yeah. I called Brad today and uh, we talked about that a little bit. Uh and uh he he thought that the Colorado had their hands full tonight. Yeah, I mean that's it, it looks like the case. I mean, North Dakota State, they're they're no joke, man. Um they're as Clyde said, they're the Alabama Division Two. So um that's that's true. But um Man, what what are you thinking about the Cats this weekend? You you uh you got a score prediction for us? I, I think it'll be about thirty five ten. I don't think they'll cover the twenty eight. I just think they just doesn't do that. And again, me and Brad talking about that. Thirty five ten. Okay. Yeah, I think it, that's a bit about where it'd be. I think they'll. Uh, and we we I think we'll um, I'm just uh, I don't think they'll run the score up on them like that. He never has, and so. I just don't think it'll happen. Now, Josh, we, we've gotten we've gotten some other uh, you know record predictions on here. I don't know that we've gotten a Josh Hart official record prediction for this year yet. So, um, you want you want to lock in your your huh. cat's uh, final final record with us? The blue the blue colored well, glass. Well, no, we're gonna beat everybody now. See, 12, see? 12 you see what 0. I said? Yeah. The blue yeah. colored glass. <laughs> Twelve and zero. Yeah. Uh, I like really. I'm I'm kind of been really stuck on nine and three. I think we'll lose to Georgia, uh, and probably Ole Miss and probably Texas. 
is my three losses. I like that. I think and, we get Tennessee, and I get think we get Tennessee and Florida this year. You, I think you have a very good. If those are your three losses, um, and you go nine and three, I think that you have a very good chance of getting in the playoff with that. Um, and and how cool would it be, Josh? to to get in the very first 12 team college football playoff. I mean, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, it'd be wonderful. I mean, and you know, just to, to be a slap to the NCAA's face with the way they did us taking taking our uh, uh basically just bull crap is what we came up with. So, oh, the vacated uh, wins, yeah, yeah. That yeah, that was, yeah. I agree with you there. But. Yeah. That was uh you know, there's other SEC teams that do a lot worse than what Kentucky does, and they came after us completely. It's just <clears throat> Tennessee NCAA is just getting ridiculous. Yeah, no, they. I I completely agree with you there, but uh, but uh, we have Josh. a lot of talent. You know, we we really we really do. I mean, the offense is loaded. We got Barry Brown, Dan, Dan Key. We got good solid running backs. That kid from Ohio State's a little banged up, but he'll be back and uh, hopefully for the South Carolina game. If not, you know, I don't think. Yeah, At least no. we we cannot we cannot lose the South Carolina again this year. Well, yeah. we can't lose with the bottom dwellers. I mean, <laughs> and we're we're supposed to be uh, we're we're we we have the talent, man, and it just I mean, this team's we get like Brad said, we got a five star quarterback. So I mean, when we get we have as much talent, we expect to get results. If they really go six and six, I was just joking about it, but if they do, then that's really very very disappointing. It would be, but you know that, that's not going to happen. We're going, we're going, we're going to be positive oh, no. until until uh, until until we can't be anymore. So yeah, no, I I I really I'm feeling it. I think this is going to be a good year, man. But uh, hey, w- when do you get back? Oh. In, when do you get back in Kentucky? Uh, Thanksgiving. I won't be home. Oh, I was man. supposed to go home this week for a blackout week, but uh, I've decided to go ahead and keep working. So for, that's why I'm going to West Virginia for a week, and then to uh, Michigan, and then. Uh, schedule hold uh, down to Louisiana, and then after that, I don't know where I'll go. So, well, uh, hey, just all over. When you get back, when you, when you get back in Kentucky, you know it'll be that much sweeter. When you get your hat, it'll be a, a, at long last. So uh, I know yeah, it's it's winter for you. It, it was funny. My mom messaged me. She's like, "Hey, you got a package from Coleman Scott from <laughs> Frankfort, Kentucky? Do you know Coleman Scott?" And I'm like, "Yeah, mom, I know Coleman." There you go. That that's right. You get that hat in the mail, but uh, yeah, I should have told her. I should have told her. You get on my Facebook feed. Go to Talk to Pokey. Go to College Forecast. Follow my dudes. <laughs> they that's, yeah. Them. Yeah, we could have got get my mom. Get my get my mom to subscribe to uh, the College Forecast for ninety nine cents. And that's all it is. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's really not that much when you think about it. But uh, well, man, yeah, we right. maybe we'll talk to you on Saturday uh, after a Kentucky win. Uh, and uh, it's good to hear from you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, go Big Blue. We're gonna have an amazing season, and uh, and then that just uh, will project us and uh, into a, a amazing basketball season. So. Uh, Things are going well for the University of Kentucky on uh, both football and uh, women's basketball as well. So I'm very excited to the direction of the programs and with which way they are heading in everything. I mean, volleyball, softball, women's basketball. I mean, we're just uh, – it's something – we got rid of – it's like we got rid of our dead weight with Calipari and uh, everything's clicking right now, and I'm very excited to see what happens. Absolutely. Me too, man. Well, we appreciate you calling in and um, we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Have a good night. Go Cats. Go Cats. All yeah. right. So Speaking Josh and I, he made a bet earlier today. He okay. was talking about this Central Michigan and uh, Connecticut, something Connecticut game, a Central Connecticut or something. Um, and he made a bet because it was such a high spread. Central Michigan has 66 points in the third quarter. <laughs> They're Man. up 66 to 10, Josh, if you're still on with us. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh, yeah, okay. John's saying he'll, he'll be on uh he'll be on the podcast. 
uh, this weekend. So yeah, John will be on the post game show with us. So uh, for the Southern yep. Mint post game show. So that's that's right. So yes, uh, absolutely. But uh, hey, to kind of wrap up here, you know, speaking of earlier today, Brad, I think you um, I think you said you had a little bit of Mark Pope practice scoop. You want to? Do you want to end this football show with a little bit of basketball? I do have a little um, Mark Pope practice scoop here that I thought was pretty interesting. So there is a, a few little tidbits here that I wanted to uh, to mention with you guys. Yeah, I saw Jeremy's playing the piano. <laughs> Play me a song, you're the piano man. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I could do that, but I can't do the I can't play the piano. <laughs> and Jeremy's a singer, so he can he'll appreciate that. But anyways, all right. So Mark Pope. Um oh shoot, we're getting another call. You getting another oh, this call? Might, this might be this might be a John Hammond's call. We'll or it see. Could be a Jeremy. Want me to play it a song? Be. You're on with Don <laughs> Kentucky. Who's this? This is John. What's going on? What's up, John? Looking forward to oh, having you God. on this weekend, man. But, we can't get uh, away from this guy. Glad you're making an appearance <laughs> tonight. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Follows me everywhere. Who's that ugly? <laughs> who's that ugly? Who's that ugly jug you got sitting next to you, man? He follows know, me right, everywhere, man? guys. Yeah. Oh, I know, man. <laughs> Man, you oh, better man. I know you're going to this South Carolina game, uh John. Man, you better you better pull us through in that one because that's gonna yeah. it, it really is gonna make or break the season. Um so I want I, I kind of wanted to get like on a serious note here. Yeah, man. Um I've been watching Colorado. Yeah. And you know, I know that everybody's kind of been, you know, all summer, me and Brad have been talking about, you know, they've been hopping up. Dion and whatnot, and I, and I understand it's the first game, and and there there's there's going to be you know um, mistakes, things happen early in the first game of the season, but when you don't improve from a year ago to now, and it looks like the same exact thing, that looks like that's a problem. That is a problem, and 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 you know who knows how much longer Dion will be at Colorado. I, I've seen some I've seen some chatter, John. I know you won't like this uh, about Dion to the Cowboys. That now that that's got to be that can never happen, right? I mean, you got to stop it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that ain't happening. No, I know. I agree. Jerry, with you. Jerry Jones is not going to let that happen. I can tell you right now. Yeah, no, I I agree. But, with you, um, I just. Some of these teams, you know, you see them from a year ago and you look at them now, and it's like, like even tonight, NC State is struggling with Western Carolina. Like, I know it's the early on, but you should be prepared and be ready to go. Western Carolina actually has night. a like, very I know good there's gonna be, Like gone. I said, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be things happening. You're, you're going to kind of try to get. Yeah. I'm not saying that they don't. I, 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 I'm not saying that. Yeah. But at the same time, I just think that, you know, some of these – that's mom in the background, by the way. She's to the dog. Oh, good. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but I just think, you know, sometimes that we, we get we get too in, in, in enthused with how some teams play and how some teams don't. And – and I feel like with Dion, he's going to have to at least have a good season. Like he's going to at least have to win five games this year, because I don't yeah. think going into next year he's going to be able to keep continuing to do this and expect to get better. No, I I agree with you, man. I I couldn't agree more there. Um, at some point the hype runs out for sure, but um, it does. Man, before we let you go, the uh, you, had, you got a score prediction for uh, for the Cats this weekend? Oh, Kentucky. Yeah. Um, 38 to 7. I, I just think Southern Miss is not that good. I don't think. They're, they're just – they're not. They've had two back-to-back three and nine years. They're just they're, – they're on the cusp of firing their coach going into, into the year. Um, there's been a lot of talk of him being let go at the end of the year down there so 
Um, I expect him to come out and play hard, but I think if we've heard what we've heard about this offense Kentucky's got, um, I think, you know, we're going to be pretty good. And the basketball team, me and Brad had a little combo with it last night, that the basketball team's going to be better than most people think. Um, I think he's know, getting ready to talk so about that on here, yeah. They're going to have some experience. Yeah. They're going to have some guys. Now, am I going to say they're going to be in the top three? Probably not. But they could be probably top six, and they can be in there. And I think there's a good chance that, you know, it's going to be a more fundamentally coached team you'll see going into some of these games. And another thing I just wanted to say, you know, Brad mentioned something last night. Kind of, he said the whole talk will be about Cooper Flag the entire time that we're watching yep. Kentucky. Yeah, and I hope Kentucky lets that get into their heads, and I hope they play hard and they win that game. Um, so, but anyways, I'll let y'all go. Um, get that, get that, get that jug off your off your screen. Like, come on now, I'll, I'll like, try. You can, do, you can do better, Coleman. I know. You can do better, Coleman. I'll I'll try. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Brad. You Brad's talking friend. about y'all a big head. Good. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak it. You speak of the devil. You, you know, you're 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 telling us some some Mark Pope scoop, Brad. So I'll let you continue with it uh, here. Yeah. So there's some practice stuff that that I had that I had heard that I found that was really interesting. So they have an offense, and they keep stats, and they keep they they're they're even keeping seconds. Okay. So their goal when they get a rebound. Their goal, they are trying to cross half court within three seconds every single time. That's some Bush Hamden tempo there. That's good. Three seconds now. Yeah. And they do this in practice every time they scrimmage. They have a clock on everything that they do, okay? And mm-hmm. every rebound, they are they are supposed to get it across half court in three seconds or less, no matter what's going on in the game. I found that pretty interesting. I like in that. In the practice. Yeah. And then another thing that I found even more interesting is this. In practice, when they are playing, you know, the game is played with a 30-second shot clock. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mark Pope is practicing with a 14 second shot clock, guys. Yeah. 14 seconds on the shot clock. He that, is expecting is. his guys to get it off the boards, get down the floor, and run some sort of set to get an open shot all within, within all 14, within 14 seconds. seconds. Now that yeah, that, so that's his, that's a change. His, yeah. What he is wanting to do is play extremely fast. And how extremely I've, that that's gonna be that's gonna be a change, right? Because we've seen this like three man weave around the three point line forever, and, and this oh. is gonna be quite quite different from that. <laughs> so uh I like it. Yeah. So, fast offense and basketball and football, Brad. I can like you it. imagine? Yeah. Playing basketball and playing with that kind of tempo that you have to shoot the ball within 14 seconds and you get a shot clock buzzer going off every time you play and pick up a ball. Like that's fast, guys. Extremely yeah. fast. And yeah. the yeah. last tidbit that I have, they have a goal as a team to have 35 three point attempts a game. I'm here for it. Let's bring it. A game. That's their goal. Wait, BYU, BYU last year put up 32 a game. Okay. Now, when you say three pointers, are you are you saying three pointers or are you saying Calipari long twos? No, I'm saying three pointers. <laughs> That's no, all. that's probably good. That, yeah, there probably won't be no long twos. Uh, hey, I, I'm all I'm all for that as well. So, and here's the deal, though: a power conference team has never, since the three point line has been in existence, has never approached 
35 and been over 35 three point attempts a game. The only teams that have done it is like some of these teams, smaller school teams have averaged like 38, 36. Loyola Marymount, as Mike says there. So, yeah. Yeah. 14 seconds is fast, guys. I mean, and, and they are playing. So, what I'm telling you is where, you know, you would only get like, let's let's call it a hundred plays in a game. He's trying to get 150 back and forth, bouncing 14, back and forth. 14 seconds. Speaking of 14 seconds, we got some Rick Patino comments in the uh, feed here. So we got, uh, is he bringing back the full court press Ricky P style? I don't think he's going to full court press because he is playing offense. I mean, Guys, I'm going to tell you, as a basketball player, to have the stamina to go up and down the floor to play that fast offensively every single possession, you have to be you have to be in shape like crazy. And I don't think you could do that and play that fast and still play Patino's defense like the early years. Jeremy saying he's bringing back the Patinos Bombinos type offense. Yeah, he's, I mean, he is he bringing back. Kind of is, is, yeah, he is kind of bringing back that. We are doing the Bombino. Yeah, that's yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, just to throw out a few uh, things that I thought was really interesting: no school power conference school has ever averaged that many, um, and their goal. I'm not saying that they're going to get there, but their goal is 35 three pointers a game. Just to take this into uh, perception here, last year was Calipari's highest average, and they only averaged 24. See, so, I mean, this is why people are excited about Kentucky basketball, because it's just, it's going to be a change. And that's really all we've been asking for is something different, because what we've been doing ain't been working lately, so. Yeah, Jeremy, you know I'm close to Bowling Green. Um, if, oh yeah, Jer- you know, Jeremy says, "What's y'all's score prediction?" Jeremy's for close to Bowling Tamagain. Green as well. Uh, we both are. He's on one side. I'm on the other. I know where Jeremy's at. So um, we're both close to Bowling Green. WKU plays a really fun, high octane offense football and has won a lot of games. Had some really good coaches over the years, um, including. Bobby Petrino, Jeff Brom. Now you got Helton there uh, that's doing a great job. They are going to Bama at the very beginning of the season here for on uh, Saturday. Uh, it's going to be a tough game, but you know, I still think what uh WKU can put up 21 points. Um, at least. I really do. Uh, they have that kind of offense. The spread, um, by the way, is 31 and a half. So I, you know. Bama's going to win. This game is at home. Um, you know, I I say give me like – let me think here for a minute. <clears throat> I think Western drops 10 on them. I think they could do that. I'm actually going to gonna pick them for a little bit more than that. Let, I'm going to go at least three scores. Maybe one of them's a, a field goal. But I, I, I actually think they can get 21. I'm going to go – I'm going to go 45-21. Hey, you've talked, you, you know, um, I visited Bowling Green this summer. Brad went over to White Squirrel Brewery, and I thought they had really good beer. And I also like Western's throwback helmets that they're going to have this year. And um, so, yeah, you know what? I, I'll raise my score from 10 to 17. My dad you know, actually I, graduated from Western, too. So, I mean, if if in my family, if we were going to pick a second school, it would be WKU. I'll go 42 to 17, uh, Alabama. Now that'll be my official prediction for that game. But, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, Bama's Brad, win, so you know. Oh yeah, Bama's win. I mean, you know, that's not that's not a debate. Yeah. So uh, maybe I mean, y'all already yeah. knew that. So, um, yeah. Brad, this has been fun. Two hours goes by in no time, man. We're, we're it does. Just, it's uh, time flies when you're having fun, man. I could I could do this all night, and uh, and thank Josh, you, Josh. You don't for, want to see my special helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, oh, we 
My special uh, helmet's really special. Yeah, you don't. Uh, yeah, you don't see that. But uh, <laughs> um, so, man, th- th- yeah, th- we can do this all night. We, we we really appreciate you guys listening, um, and uh, and hanging out with us. And thanks for the interaction. This is the this is what makes the show great when people are are watching and, and calling in. Got three calls tonight, and then we we got all the comments too. So that's that's great. And and just a reminder to everybody. We're going to be doing this all season, like post game shows after every game. So, you know, yep. just be sure you follow both college sports cast and talking Kentucky. If I can talk them into it, we might even throw some basketball post games in here and there. So, and, absolutely. And, and have us on too. So, yeah, and Jeremy, yeah, you can always, you can always go re- back and rewatch the first part, as, as Jeremy says here. So, you know, it's on both of ours. It's on college sports cast and talking Kentucky tonight. So, you can yeah. do that. It's going to be up uh, on uh, I'm actually doing a Madeline. I'm actually doing a show tomorrow night. Um, it'll be on at eight central because I have a guy on that's got working and, and is going to get in late. So it'll be on at eight central tomorrow night. I'm doing a game day pick them show. So I'm going to be doing all, some of these games that we talked about tonight and doing some picks and uh, have a couple of guys on with me tomorrow night. And so all our stuff um, is is left up. Every show is left up on our Facebook and YouTube channels, um, and then we also post to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and pretty much it, pretty much every other podcast platform you can imagine. So it's it's not hard to find us on on the socials, Brad. So. No, no, I, my Brad CS Cast is the Twitter there. That's the reason why I have that up there. That is my Twitter, uh, so you can find me there. On Twitter, you can also find College Sportscast on Facebook. We are growing there, and uh, and I have lots of other stuff too. And we're all over the place. Our show is on audio in Apple and Spotify and all that as well, and YouTube. Just follow College Sportscast, and you can you can actually Google College Sportscast, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that pops up. So oh, yeah. we've been doing this. Just- We've been doing this for over Google two us. years. So, yeah. yeah, just Google it. Talking Kentucky or College Sports. Just Google us, yeah. and you'll find a us. whole bunch of stuff pops that's up. Big. Yeah, that's yeah. that's how big big time we are now. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, it's pretty hey, cool Matt, that you can Google us. So, yeah, yeah it, it is actually pretty cool. Um, Madeline says, "What are we calling this episode, Brad? I, I think um, I think we call it Talking Football. We don't have a Talking Football yet, so I think y'all don't have uh, a Talking Football yet." We, we don't have a talk in football, so now's as good time as that. We that's what we did tonight. We just talked football, yeah. little yeah, basketball, much. Yeah. but a lot of football. Just so a I'm, touch I'm, there at the end, yeah. I'm going. I'm going talking football. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, guys, join us here uh, late Saturday night uh, for our po- Southern Miss post game show. Before we get out of here, Brad, we got to do score predictions for the Cats. And uh, the the Golden Eagles, I think it is. So, um, yeah, Brad, what what you going with? It's the fighting Brett Farves. It's the fighting Brett. Did Brett Favre play for them? Yeah, oh, he, he was, did. Okay. Yeah. So is that, uh, he is was the last was time my, they were good. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. <laughs> he wow. was. I think he was eighty nine. I believe in the class of eighty nine. I think. Are they going to wear Wrangler right? jeans to warm up in? <laughs> It's like gonna yeah. be what they, they come out hey, in. So Brett Favre was one of my favorites. I know he's not a favorite now because of some of the stuff, but oh, that's true. Dude, yeah, he was a gunslinger. I mean, I loved him. I loved watching him play. But anyway, he played at Southern Miss. He's the probably the most famous football alum. Um, is from Southern Miss. Is probably Brett Favre. So, um, just throwing that out there. Okay. Um, score prediction. You know, the 28 points sounds high to me. I've never seen Stoops come out with a throttle that high, to be honest with you. Of course, we've never had Bush Hamden. So I don't know if, you know, if they're going to come out in that hurry up and they're going to come out with some gas, to be honest with you. Um, uh, So I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to do a weird score and call it. I'm going to do it a little less than the 28. I'm going to do it 37 to 10. 
37 to 10. Okay, which I, would I like be, that, Brad. Which would be like three field goals and four touchdowns. Hey, we might get a lot of field goals with this kicker, by the way, which, uh, you know, yeah. he, he's, he's kicking. I mean, he kicked in their scrimmage the other day, Brad. He kicked three 60-yarders, made all three of them. Uh, yeah, the, the freshman, the he's, he's got a leg. He's, he's got quite a lay, so we're, we're going to see some yeah. field goals this year, guys. Mike says, where's Caden? Mike, he's in Hawaii. He's on that Matt Jones vacation time. He's, so, yeah. We, we, we dropped him off, you know, in, in the Caribbean somewhere, and he took a boat up yeah. to Hawaii. <laughs> he, he's in Hawaii, so but uh, but he'll he'll be back. Uh, he'll, be, he'll be back on next week, so uh, we'll we'll be we'll yeah, be able to talk with him next vacation. week. But um, he's, he's had a terrible time in Hawaii. Yeah, that's all. Ter- terrible. Yeah, yeah, ter- terrible. terrible. All, awful. Jeremy says uh, Caden got lost in Myers. Yeah, he's, he's out there. He's just signing too many autographs in Myers lately, Brad. That's what he's doing. <laughs> that's, he's, he's still signing autographs there. But uh, okay. Hey, you like you said thirty-seven to ten. I think the cats break 40. I'm going 42 to 10, Brad. I like your 10, but I'm going 42. I think they break into that. Bush Hampton gets in the 40s. And I think the cats are 1 0 going into a big game against South Carolina and Lexington uh, week two. So. And I'm ready to lay the wood to the Gamecocks. Yeah, please. And <laughs> we can talk, <clears throat> talk more about that after we take next, care of next week. But yes. I'm telling y'all, yeah. Yeah. I'm ready to lay the wood to the Gamecocks. That's right. Absolutely. SEC doormat, South Carolina. One fan held. Yeah, that's what <laughs> we're doing. So. Well, for Coleman Scott and for Brad Harvey, this has been episode number 107 of Talking Kentucky. We'll see you guys on Saturday after the game. Go Cats. And uh, it's football time in the bluegrass. Woohoo.